Hello cuties, how is everyone doing? It's time for my March wrap up and I am so excited for this one. I'm really looking forward to chatting about to you because I had such a good reading month in March, both in terms of ratings and in terms of how many books I read. So shall we just dive straight into it? We don't need any preamble, let's just get into it. I'm very excited to chat about this. Um, if you're new here, I do, I don't know why I'm, hey. Um... <laughs> this is awkward already off to a chaotic start. If you don't know how I usually do my wrap ups, I usually do all my statistics, reading statistics at first, then we'll go through every book I read with just their rating because like I always say, every single book I read this month is in a reading vlog somewhere on my channel apart from one book that I read for my Patreon book club where there's a reading vlog on my Patreon for it. So everything is vlogged, everything I read is vlogged. <laughs> and then we'll go through my disappointment, surprise and hits, really focusing on, on the highlights and lowlights of the month. But shall we just dive into it? Because I got, I think I did really well in March in terms of my reading. So in March I read 15 books which I think my highest ever, let's let's check shall we, I feel like the highest amount of books I've ever read in a month was 16 but it could be 18. Let's have a look because Goodreads will see my entire history. Oh no 17. 17 books is the most I've ever read in a month so 15 is definitely up there with kind of the, oh there's a piece of fluff in the air, oh it's, we're off into a chaotic start. Usually I'd say 13 books a month is my average, so it's a little bit higher than average for me. Pages read was 4,069 pages, that is an average pages per day of 131, or an average pages per book of 271. I did read quite a few novellas in my last video of the month, as you guys were seeing where I was reading 10 books to buy one. I did prioritise some of the smaller books on my TBR, so that's why that number's a bit smaller. My average rating this month was a 3.8. A lot of you all know one of my goals this year is to have at least an average rating for the year of a 3.8 or higher because that would be my highest average rating for a year ever. Every year I average 3.7. Every year I average 3.7. And so far in February and March my average rating has been 3.8 or higher. It's only January that's bringing us down because our year average rating so far is still a 3.6. So it's still under but we're bringing it up. We're really like... <laughs> <laughs> like trying to haul it up with us um, because January, I don't even know what my average rating in January was. Shall I see? I can't remember. My average rating in January was a three. Holy shit. Okay. So just in February and March, we've managed to take that from a three to a 3.6. So I feel like with the rest of the year, if we keep trying to read books that I'm going to love, we can, we can bring it up. Listen, we've taken it through a 3.3.6. That's pretty impressive. The average time a book spent on my TBR was 15 months. That's pretty high for me. I read a lot of books this month that had been on my TBR for quite a long time. I read, you know, a book from Wrapped Up Retro. It's always going to be a book that's been on my TBR for a long time. I read two of the Forgotten Women books for some of the oldest books on my TBR. So I really ticked off quite a few that had been on my TBR for quite a while. And in terms of the amount I spent on books, I spent £43 this month on books, which I say is probably about average for me but 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 your honor but 24 pounds of that was in cash which doesn't really count and it was birthday cash which doesn't really count that's like a birthday gift to myself so really i spent 19 pounds on books this month if you want to be pedantic it's not adding up but um no i spent 43 pounds but 24 rolls of cash it doesn't really count you know okay let's get into the pie charts in terms of the ratings I gave out, I had two 2.5 stars, two 3 stars, three 3.5 stars, three 4 stars, three 3.5 stars, and two 5 stars. Pretty equal there in terms of how many books each rating got. In terms of genres, I read four fantasy, two magical realism, three mystery, three non-fiction. Guys, I've read five non-fiction so far this year. Oh my god, it's 12. Let, let's all get ahead of ourselves because it could, like, I could not read any for a couple months, but I'm doing so well on that goal. Let's just take that in. Uh, I read one romance and two thriller. In terms of the format, I read one anthology, two graphic novels, nine novels, and three novellas. In terms of author status, three were debuts, three were authors that were new to me, and nine were authors I'd read from before. That's probably why I had a better reading month. I'd said previously this year, I hadn't read a ton of books from authors I'd read from before. I was reading a lot of new authors, and I I think I really like it to be 50-50 authors I've read from before and authors that are new to me or a debut because with authors you've read from before you know what to expect, you know you're more likely to enjoy them so I'm glad that I've switched that around finally this month. In terms of how I read them, one was an audiobook, five were physical and nine were a mixture meaning I had the physical and the audio. In terms of how I acquired the books, three were books I bought myself, ten were gifted and two were sent to me by 
by the publisher. I read a lot of books this month, but I think I got gifted either at Christmas or my birthday, because I remember when I was filling in my spreadsheet, a lot had been on my <laughs> TBR for three or two months, meaning they were either from Christmas or my birthday, because that's how long ago they were. So yeah, I read a lot of books that I had gathered during Christmas or my birthday. In terms of audience, I read 13 adult, one YA, and one middle grade. And then in terms of series stats, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Whenever I'm ready. Okay. I read five that were partway through a series, two that were last in a series, and eight that were standalone. Oh my god, guys. 50% of my reading this month was series. Ah! 50% of my reading this month was part of a series and I finished two series. Also in those like five that were part way through a series, I think at least two of them were books where I got up to date in a series, but I finished two series. Guys, I've only started one series this year. Hmm, let's all just take that in. <laughs> Gagachandra. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with my series goals this month. I think I really did a really good job on that. I may be starting, what am I reading in March? Maybe like one or two series that I'm reading the first in. I, mean, I always, you know, doesn't mean I'm going to continue them because it depends what I think of the first one. But, um, you know, I think I've put myself in a really good standing at the start of the year. I already started one series. I finished two. So we're in a net negative and I've made progress in a couple more where I'll be up to date for some of the year. So yes, let's get into all the books and what rating I gave them. So, I read Death of a Bookseller by Alice Stater, which I gave 2.5 stars. When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean, which I gave 4 stars. These first two books, I cannot believe I read them in March. It feels like 10 years ago. I think March was so busy and so much happened in my life. I'm like, what? <laughs> How, how was this March? Anyways, I read Night Film by Marisha Pestle, which I gave 4.5 stars. How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey, which I gave 2.5 stars. Murder Isn't Easy, The Forensics of Agatha Christie by Carla Valentine, which I gave 3.5 stars. Shark Heart by Emily Habeck, which I gave 5 stars. Into the Riverlands by Nevo, which I gave 3 stars. Rotten to the Core by T.E. Kinsey, which I gave 4.5 stars. Forgotten Women the Artist by Zing Sing, which I gave 4.5 stars. Thornhedge by T. Kingfisher, which I gave 4 stars stars. Before We Say Goodbye by Toshi Kazu Kawaguchi, which I gave three stars. Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, which I gave five stars. Mammoth at the Gate by Nevo, which I gave four stars. Island of Whispers by Frances Harding, which I gave 3.5 stars. And Forgotten Women the Scientist by Zing Sing, which I gave 3.5 stars. Okay, time to get into the disappointments. Let's talk about the worst of the month before we get into the best. why I put a sweater dress on today like it's actually quite warm for some reason I felt like I was cold but now I'm really regretting this decision but we can't make a mid video <laughs> outfit change okay my first disappointment was the only book that isn't on a vlog on my channel and that is Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater this was my February patron book club pick I always tend to read them in the next month because I read them right before the live show so that I've got everything really fresh in my brain this one oh it was so disappointing so in this we're following Roach who is this loner bookseller who's very into true crime she loves serial killers. Oh, don't get me started on Roach. Don't get me started. Imagine saying to someone, I love serial killers. Go! <laughs> Fuck! Very disturbing. Go see a counsellor. And then we're following, what's the other one? Laura, who's like, you know, everyone loves her. She's a cute bookseller. She's got a tote bag. She's got a sunny demeanor. Oh my God, it's Laura. And Roach kind of becomes obsessed with her. And like, it's an examination of true crime. It's a lot, the good thing about this is a lot of like backstage of book selling, which I enjoyed. There's like discussions around where to shelf books that I did enjoy that aspect of it. And the response to this in the book club was kind of overwhelmingly negative. A few people enjoyed it, which is good, but not a lot of people enjoyed it. it this just didn't do it for me. It's a debut. And I don't think this book really knew what it was wanting to say. It didn't go into the book with like a clear direction. It kind of went in thinking, oh, I'll figure it out as I go along, but then didn't then, then in drafts, like figure out a clearer direction. The issue for this is that nothing really happens. And the examination of true crime is not an examination. It's so surface level. When you've read, and a lot of people in the book club had just read Bright Young Women. A lot of them have been reading that. And some of them read Bright Young Women and then this straight after. And that was, I imagine, such a jarring experience because Bright Young Women, 
which I read for the most recent Goodreads Choice Awards, it has such a nuanced examination of true crime and why are people into true crime and why do people develop a fascination towards serial killers and like simultaneously examining why someone would maybe be interested in that and like interested in true crime but also critiquing it. It is such a wonderful examination of that and this is just like he <laughs> she loves true crime oh my god we love serial killers and there's other people going oh you're weird for that and she's like no i'm not weird and oh <sighs> i can't get into a lot of the problems i had with the, the ending in particular let's just say there's lies being told to you let me just say there's lies being told to you in the marketing of the spec i'm just gonna tell that because this ending oh it was so disappointing <laughs> Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. So just not a lot really happened. It doesn't have a strong three line. The writing was kind of annoying. Roach is a very irritating main character. And here's the thing, I am all for irritating, you know, unlikable main characters. Actually, we're gonna talk about another unlikable main character that I didn't like the book of in a second. But I mean, I do usually enjoy unlikable main characters, but they've gotta be interesting. If you're doing an unlikable main character, they've gotta have like a little something something about them, a little something that makes me want to kind of root for them but like I'm like oh I shouldn't root for you but like you're kind of fun you're kind of camp you know what I mean there has to be that interplay and in both of this this case and the next book there just wasn't Roach just got on my tits <laughs> just so annoying so yes unfortunately a little bit of a disappointment because I loved the cover the UK cover list so I was very excited for it but alas not not great and my other disappointment was how to kill your family by bella mackie my disappointment is immeasurable because richard osman says he loved this book richard are we all right <laughs> my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined and did someone pull some strings was this a favor to your publisher like what's going on in this one we're following a girly who endeavors to kill her father's entire side of the family he, he she never really knew him he abandoned her when she was young and she's like i'm gonna kill all of them and it's a story of her doing that now this is too repetitive it's told basically we just go from one murder to another and each time the former is the same she's like here's why i hate this person here's why they're such a bad person here's an imaginative way i'm going to kill them that is like perfect to their personality and their interests and what their life is like and then i go and kill them that that's basically it and i said in the vlog also miss girly hates everyone on earth <laughs> this main character she she hates everyone in the course of this book i read out like a list in the vlog someone had done on a good reason view of like every single type of person that this book hated and it's everyone on earth <laughs> Like if you breathe, this all, this character hates you. I think this is trying to go for like quirky, funny, you know, oh I, you know, critique of humanity. But I said this then and I said it now. There's a reason Richard Osman is blurbed on this. The publisher wants you to see that and think, oh, I enjoyed the Thursday Murder Club. So I'll want to pick this up. This has to do with murder like that did. Also the Thursday Murder Club, like I always say, really distills down human nature. Really, I think is one of the best books of series I've ever read that really holds a lens up to human nature and those weird little quirks we have and those little things that really make people tick and that people love. I think sometimes books like to create a narrative of what people should love and what people should enjoy and Richard Osman is like no this is actually what they do enjoy like he talks about this a lot on his podcast as well if you haven't listened to it the rest is entertainment which is kind of about tv and movies and stuff because he worked in that for a long time and he's saying like people like to think that everyone's watching I don't know some highbrow show in reality everyone's watching Bargain Hunt me included I love Bargain Hunt do you know what I mean that there's a perception of what our country is like and what what it actually is like or in, in general what humanity is like so we pick up this book thinking oh this is gonna have like a real examination of humanity whereas Thursday Night Club is positive about humanity this is overwhelmingly negative just everything bad you could ever say about humanity this book has so yeah unfortunately this was quite the disappointment and I would not recommend let's get into the surprises let's be positive now for the rest of the video My first surprise was Forgotten Women the Artist by Zing Singh. I had previously read two in this series. This is a non-fiction series all about women. 
women throughout history and we have about three pages on each and an illustration a little tale about who the woman is and what her life was and in this case it's the artist so we have painters we have photographers we have experimental kind of live theater artists this surprised me so much having read others in the series my reading experience this was so wonderful because i looked up every woman's art on google just like a quick look but it gave me such i felt like a wonderful reading experience and really i want to get to know all of these women even more because it was just so fascinating and I always say this series for me is really a five-star concept I love the idea of us really uplifting women from history that time has forgotten history is so masculine history is so masculine I remember I still vividly remember when I went to the open evening for the sixth form I ended up moving to I ended up moving to an all boys uh, grammar school sixth form so in the UK I don't know if it's similar if you even have all girls I don't know I don't know but when we have like an all girls school and all boys school here in the UK often at sixth form which is the last two years before university it becomes mixed so I went to an all girls secondary school but in sixth form boys could join and if you go to an all boys secondary school in sixth form girls can join so I went there and I was looking around and one of the subjects I was maybe considering doing was history and whereas at my school if I'd done history at my old school um, it would have had a lot of like interesting world topics, you know, that like, you know, maybe focus on women because it's a girls' school. When we went to the boys' school, it was like war, war, men, men, war, war, men, men <laughs> in terms of the history syllabus. And I remember my mum saying to the history teacher, like, this is a very masculine presentation of history. It's, you're only really talking about men. He went, well, yes. And I was like, I'm being honest, I'm a bit pissed off about it. And he was like, because this is a boys' school. I'm like, well, you got girls here in the, in the, in the sixth form. Anyway, so I need to say I did not take history, but it just irritates me how a male history is. And I think this book is wonderful. This series is wonderful at uplifting the women that time has forgotten. So I cannot recommend these enough. My favorites in the series are by far the artists and the leaders. I did not love the writers and the scientists as much. I think the leaders and the artists are the best ones. So I cannot recommend it enough. They may be a little bit hard to get your hands on now. I don't know if they've stopped printing them because they are a little bit old, but I loved it. And then my other surprise, again, this feels like it was 10 years ago, so forgive me. <laughs> this will be a brief, this will be a brief synopsis, but this is When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This was the uh, book for Wrapped Up Retro in March. And we're following this woman who's a seasoned missing persons detective, but from the beginning we know something has gone wrong in her personal life and she's kind of moved back to her town where she grew up in to kind of lick her wounds and figure out what her next move is when a series of girls go missing and she's helping out her old friend who is now the sheriff in finding out what happened and I did not expect really anything going into this but I think this is a wonderful I would say literary thriller it is a thriller or mystery I guess you know you have got this true crime element of trying to find these girls but it the writing in this was beautiful I always say I actually think this cover usually I'm not a big fan of like picture covers but I think this cover with like the fog and the eeriness really paints a good picture of this book the atmosphere this book created was wonderful I had a really great time reading this and I really was not expecting it this was like a three star prediction if I'd ever if I'd ever had one you know what I mean I really was not expecting anything going into it but it was really engrossing and I think this is I think Paula McLean typically writes more literary fiction and this was kind of her first mystery thriller and I think you can see that it's it's playing with some of the tropes that we see a lot but in a very interesting soft haunting way so if you're looking for a thriller mystery with a little bit of like a different edge to it I would recommend this I was very much surprised by how much I enjoyed it And finally, we are on to the hits. So first, my probably biggest hit of the month was Shark Heart by Emily Habeck. I don't want to tell you anything about this book. I think you should just go into it not really knowing a lot. We are following a couple who have just been married and they find out that he, the guy in the couple, is um, slowly turning into a great white shark. And it's a story of their love and then kind of it's this rapid diagnosis and rapid kind of deterioration or transformation that he has and them dealing with that. Now, something I love about this book, it's told through a lot of really short paragraphs. Often like a chapter would just be a couple of pages or maybe even a paragraph. And I thought that that pacing worked really well with the book. I thought the writing was beautiful. That was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. For a debut, I think you can see where this writing could improve, right? It is, it kind of knows it's beautiful. And I feel like to be truly like 
a hundred, a hundred percent, it has to like kind of let go of the knowing. You can feel that it knows it's beautiful. However, I loved it. I gave it five stars. I loved the writing style. I loved the quietness of this book and the, the exploration of what it means to love and what it means to lose and what it means to grieve. I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was so wonderful. We do end up following a few different other stories as well, but I think you should kind of go into it not really knowing much of that. I, I adored this. I can see why it would not be for everyone, but it made me sob. I <laughs> could not stop crying reading this. I think it was a really beautiful story and I just loved, yeah, I loved the way it was told. So I felt like not often do you encounter a book, and these are really five stars, that like take you in and hold your hand and grab you and like hold up a light. And you know what I mean? When books, you just feel that magic, right? When it's a five star and you're like, this book is really saying something and doing something. I'm really excited to see what Emily Habeck comes out with next because I just thought this was absolutely wonderful. I love the quietness. I love the smallness. I love the allegory that this had for certain things. So yeah, absolutely loved it. And then of course, a hit for me was Hearts of a Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I gave it five stars. I'm always going to give these five stars. Probably not my favourite in the series, but I think it does a really good job of like taking us from where this book started then putting us in a really good place for the final book which is going to come out maybe next year I think or the year after. In this Nick and Charlie are very much in love but Nick needs to go away to uni. He's a school year older than Charlie so he's going to move away first and um, he's going around and visiting unis and then they're also thinking about having sex for the first time. So it's those kind of two very big teenage experiences that they're navigating in this which come with a lot of really big feelings and I just think Alice Oseman portrays it in just like the most wonderful way. The way she she portrays these topics in, in all these books. There's, there's a lot of things that Charlie struggles with mentally in the previous books of the series. I think they take these these experiences that teenagers go through uh, and just portrays them in the most wonderful way. I, I imagine if I was a teenager reading these, I'd feel so comforted. Especially if I was a young teenager. I think it's different maybe when you're a little bit older and you're living through these experiences, but I think it's something you think about a lot when you're a bit younger and like, how will I navigate that? And I think it, it tells, these, these books tell you like, everything's gonna be okay. Like you will get through this. You're living some of the greatest experiences of your life, but also some of the worst experience. Being a teenager is fucking awful in many ways. <laughs> and I just think these books are such a lovely, lovely thing to exist in the world for teenagers Day. I cannot recommend them enough. I just love them. I love them so much. I love them so much. Over 8 million copies sold. Go Alice Oseman. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I am so proud of her. I could cry. And then I just want to give a quick shout out to a 4.5 this month, but it was a hit. And that is Night Film by Marisha Pestle. I feel like I've spoken about this book a lot lately. Oh yeah, because it's on the Five Star Predictions reaction video as well. So we'll just we'll just talk about this very quickly. If you want to go watch the vlog, this then you can. A Girl is Murdered, an investigative journalist who's done a lot of research into her director, controversial director father, decides to look into what has happened. It's long, it's long, but it's so worth it. I absolutely adored this. The final quarter for me just wasn't as strong but I think this book was trying to do so much it was so ambitious with what it was trying to do that I think it would have been very difficult to like pull it off 100% so I in my mind this is maybe like it's almost a five it's almost a five star, you know, just didn't quite get there. But it has mixed media, it has photographs, it has emails. This was just such a fun reading experience. I love when reading's fun. Reading should be fun, right? Sometimes I think, oh, we're, this is why I don't just read like serious books because yes, serious books are important and like amazing or whatever. But I also love reading a book that's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. I always say I love a performance. I love a moment. I love a book that does something different. I love a book that's like, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do this shit. You know what I mean? That's what this book is doing. <laughs> I don't know how much sense that makes, but I absolutely loved this. I really, really did. And I thought it was so ambitious. I really admired what it was trying to do. So there we have it, everyone. That is my March wrap up. Let me know how your March went down below. Did you have a good reading month? Did you not have a good reading month? Let me know your disappointments, surprises, and hits. If you got to the end of the video, comment. What should we comment? Comment a shark emoji for shark art. Comment the shark emoji if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.